Hi everyone, welcome to Lecture 10C of Useful Genetics, where we're going to be talking about aneuploidy. It's again a version of ploidy, we'll explain what it is, we'll talk about how it happens in both somatic cells and in germline cells, and the consequences. So aneuploidy refers to a condition where cells have the wrong number of chromosomes. Specifically, not the wrong number of complete sets of chromosomes, but the presence of an incomplete set, a set that's missing one or more of the chromosomes it should have, or what I've been calling an overcomplete set, a set that has more than one copy of one or more of the chromosomes. And both somatic and germline aneuploidies are very important. Um, many, many of our cells are aneuploid. Although we start out diploid, egg meets sperm, the zygote is diploid, but during development, many tissue types are quite tolerant of chromosome loss and gain, and so aneuploid cells accumulate. Uh, in the germline, most aneuploids are inviable, but sometimes survive, and aneuploidies are very common. I think the right number here is 4% of all pregnancies are aneuploid. Now, Somatic aneuploidy arises by errors in mitosis. And these errors are similar to, but less dramatic than, the errors that produce tetraploid cells. Basically, that the, my, the mitotic spindle drops a chromosome, makes a mistake, lets go of a chromosome too soon, or fails to attach to the chromosome. And the normal checkpoints that try to ensure that everything is correct before the cell divides, sometimes these checkpoints still fail. And the consequence is that although the original cell had two copies of each chromosome, the daughter cells, this one has only one copy of this middle-sized chromosome, and this one has three. So we would describe this cell, this cell is 2n, 2n equals 6 in this case, there's three different chromosomes, we describe this cell as being 2n minus 1, and this cell as being 2n plus 1. Now, I said that aneuploid cells are very common in our normal tissues, but they're even more common in tumors. Um, you'll recall when we described this analysis of um, kidney cancer genomes, that many, many cells were aneuploid, many different kinds of aneuploidies. And here's a figure that I showed you in a previous lecture of the karyotypes of two tumor cells from a pancreatic carcinoma and an osteosarcoma, a bone cancer. And at that, when I showed you them the first time, I was emphasizing the number of chromosomes that were tetraploid, suggesting that these cancers might have arisen by an initial event that made the cells tetraploid. But now I want you to look at the other numbers of chromosomes. Here, this cell, it has chromosomes, sorry, that are tetrasomic. It has four copies of some of its chromosomes. But for others of its chromosomes, it only has two copies. And for some, it has three. For some, it has three copies. This cell is even more aneuploid. It has numbers ranging from six copies of something that's at least partially chromosome one down to just one copy of chromosome three. Um, it's thought that in many cases, chromosome loss in tumor cells actually can be part of the suite of events that enhances their ability to replicate and to grow when they shouldn't. Now, germline aneuploidies, unlike um, somatic aneuploidies, germline aneuploidies primarily arise by errors in mitosis, although they can arise by errors in mitosis in the germline. The most common human aneuploidies are either monosomies, one chromosome is missing, so the chromosome number is 2n minus 1, or they're trisomies, there's three copies of one chromosome, so the cell has 2n plus 1 chromosomes. 
Aneuploidies are very important for human well-being because aneuploidy is the leading cause of reproductive failure, the leading cause of miscarriage of pregnancies that do not go to term, and it's the leading cause of congenital birth defects in humans. Um, here's a karyotype of a person with trisomy 21. Trisomy, they've got three copies of chromosome 21. You can see that here. Now, these errors in meiosis can arise either in meiosis 1, as shown here, where in the first meiotic division, one of the chromosomes has been basically let go, and it has been randomly positioned in one or the other cell when the cell divided. And so one of these daughter, these two small chromosomes, should be over here. The result is after the cell goes through meiosis II, there are two cells that have that are trisomic and two cells that are monosomic. When the monosomic or trisomic ovum is fertilized by a node a normal sperm, this gives rise to an aneuploid zygote that's 2N except for having either one too many or one too few chromosomes. These errors can also happen in meiosis too. In that case, only one pair of daughter cells are affected. One has N plus one, one has N minus one. The other two gametes are normal. And again, um, if a aneuploid ovum merges with a, noble, a normal sperm, we'll get an aneuploid zygote. Now, I said that these meiotic errors were very common in pregnancies, and here's the data. So this is the same kind of table of chromosome abnormalities per 100,000 recognized human pregnancies. And these are the data for trisomies. Human monosomies do not survive except for monosomy for the X chromosome, which we'll talk about a couple of lectures from now. Um, you can see, though, that the total number of trisomies is about 4,000 out of 100,000. That means about 4% of all pregnancies have trisomies, and the great majority of these trisomies do not go to term. They're not found in the live birth column. They're found in the spontaneously aborted column. These are the miscarriages. And this is why we say that um, aneuploidies are the primary cause of failure of pregnancy. Some of them, however, do survive. Um, trisomies for chromosome 21, chromosome 18, and chromosome 13 can survive. Um, we're most familiar with Down syndrome, trisomy for 21, but trisomies um, 13, 18, and 13 can also survive, although um, children with these trisomies are much more severely affected than children with Down syndrome. Even for Down syndrome, which we think of as being a very viable trisomy, you'll note that about three times as many pregnancies are spontaneously aborted as go to term. So even then, this is a serious cause of, of failure of pregnancy. Now, why are most aneuploidies not viable? Um, the answer is that aneuploidy causes unbalanced gene dosage. So the cell, the um, embryo, has too many copies of one chromosome relative to the others, if it's a trisomy, or too few copies of the chromosome relative to the others, if it's a monosomy. And the body can't cope with these imbalances very well. Natural selection has never evolved to optimize um, gene expression in organisms with defective sets of chromosomes. Um, they're sufficiently uncommon that they're simply um, not really acted on by natural selection. Natural selection has um, been very effective at optimizing gene regulation in people with normal numbers of chromosomes. Um, 
so that all of the transcription factors and other regulatory processes have been carefully, well, carefully, um, it occurs randomly because it occurs by natural selection, but the consequence is fine-tuning of the behavior of all of the factors that control the levels of transcription and translation of each gene so that the gene products are present in the best, the optimal amounts for their functions. But if gene copies are changed, this all, this regulation all falls apart. And that's thought to be the cause of the inviability of most aneuploidies. And of course it makes sense that the only aneuploidies that are well tolerated or tolerated at all are the ones for the smallest chromosomes, the chromosomes with the fewest genes, because those are the least likely to severely disrupt overall gene expression. So we've considered both somatic and germline aneuploidies, which arise by errors in mitosis if they're somatic, or in meiosis 1 or 2 if they're germline. For somatic um, aneuploidies, they're typical of tumor tissues, but they're also present in almost all, I think, of our normal tissues as well. Um, germline aneuploidies are a major cause of reproductive problems in humans and of disabilities in um, people. And most aneuploidies, most germline aneuploidies, are inviable because of unbalanced gene dosage. Coming up next, we're going to consider the risk factors for germline aneuploidies. I hope to see you there.